Hi everybody, let's now have a look at another very interesting real-world wage differential. Why are there regional variances in wages? I'm going to talk through this video in context of the north-south divide in the UK. It might seem a bit harsh to generalise, but it's factually proven that average wages in the north are lower than average wages in the south. In truth, in the UK, there is a big uh, divide between London and the rest of the UK, but it's not wrong to say that there is a north-south divide in the UK. And one big economic reason, that's what we're going to focus on here, the economic reasons behind this divide, is because of the restructuring of the UK economy, especially since the 1970s, where the UK economy moved away from manufacturing, from heavy industry specialisation, towards specialising in services, especially financial services. And a lot of those jobs, financial services jobs, are in London, whereas the manufacturing jobs, the heavy industry jobs, are in the north. So therefore, if the UK economy is restructuring away from heavy industry and manufacturing, then MRPs up north are going to be much, much lower. The marginal revenue product of those workers are going to be much lower as demand for them is much, much lower. Whereas demand for workers who could work in service-based industries, in financial industries in particular, their MRPs are going to be much higher and they can demand much higher wages as a result, leading to this massive regional variance in wage. Linked to that point is the negative multiplier effects that can occur in industries that are going into decline. So up north, where we have the fall in decline of the manufacturing sector, the fall in the decline of heavy industry, all the workers that are maybe unemployed in those industries now I don't have the wage potential to spend uh, in large proportion in their regional economies like they might have been doing beforehand. Therefore, all the different industries that are dependent on that spending will see a fall in demand for their products and therefore, because labour is a derived demand, all the workers in those industries may therefore become redundant because there is less money coming in, there is less demand for the products they're selling, as the workers in the manufacturing industries uh, lose their jobs. So that's a negative multiplier effect. And because labour is a derived demand, there are further ripples in the regional economy, more unemployment throughout that region, which can again lead to a large wage variance, regional wage variance. Vice versa is true in areas where there is high demand for workers. Um, wages are therefore pushed up, that money is then spent in the regional economy that creates more jobs, it creates higher wages, and you see that variance get greater and greater. The same can be argued in terms of a negative accelerator effect. So that was a negative multiplier effect, making the wage variance worse, but also a negative accelerator effect. Firms are not willing to invest if they know that the growth rate of that regional economy is falling, and that again reduces uh, the wage growth potential, whereas vice versa in service sector uh, areas, in those kind of regions, you see positive investment, large job creation as a result, higher wages, and you see prosperity making the regional variants worse, not good. We can argue that there is occupational and there is geographical immobility in the north. A lot of the economists will say, well, if there is such a large variance between wages in the north and in the south, then why isn't there this flock of workers from the north to the south? Why isn't there this migration? There should be, right? For these guys to get the high wages. Well, one argument against that is because a lot of the workers in the north are occupationally immobile. They don't have the skills that can transfer to take jobs down south. They don't have the qualifications for them to work in service sector occupations down south. Maybe that's the issue. Maybe the issue is they've got family ties, meaning they're not willing to move their physical location. They are geographically immobile, which keeps them to wanting to work in the north. That reduces the migration flow you'd expect when there are large regional variances. At the same time, maybe the, the issue is that um, a lot of the migration that does take place is of the most productive workers in the north moving down south. The most productive workers were the ones maybe earning the high wages up north. But if they're the ones that are leaving and moving down south, you are only leaving behind the lowest paid workers and that makes the regional variance worse. So here are some of the economic arguments behind a north-south divide in the UK, but also general reasons why there might be regional variances in uh, wages regardless of the country you are looking at. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video where we look at another very interesting wage differential in the real world. See you then. Thanks for watching.